One of the questions that I get a lot from my viewers is how they can create a fillable form that when they send it to their users, if that user happens to uh, open the, up the document and print it instead of filling it out electronically, how can it look still clean and formatted nicely when it's printed? Today we're going to take a look at a form that was intended to just be a printable form, but we're going to turn it into a form that can be filled out either electronically, but still retain a lot of the clean elements if the user does print the form and fill it out manually. If you decide to give them that option, they'll have the option to fill it out electronically or print it and fill it out. All right, first we're gonna take a look at this form here. We notice that there is a table. So if this were a printed form, the user could simply check the box or put an X in the box there. But we wanna make this electronic as well. So we're gonna select the table and then we are gonna actually place our cursor where we want to insert the checkbox form field in Legacy Tools. You're gonna to come up to your Developer tab, and if you haven't already seen the playlist on my channel for creating fillable forms, go ahead and check that out so you'll see how to enable the Developer tab on your ribbon. We're gonna go ahead and insert a Legacy Tool checkbox, and then we're gonna copy that and paste it here. We're gonna copy that row, and then highlight all the way down and paste. Now notice that it's a little bit off center. So the way that we can fix that is if we select all of those checkboxes and we come up to the table design. It's a sub tab that's, that appears when you have a table in your Word document. Now we can come up here to the layout sub tab and then under the alignment area, click on the center alignment. And we do that so that it lines up with the text over here that is left center aligned. All right, then what we can do is totally select that um, table and come up to your table design under borders and select no border. So now we don't need to have those grid lines since we have the check boxes that are all lined up. All right, the next element of this form that we can tell it's uh, designed to just be printed at this point is that there are underscores on, in the comments section for the drawn lines. So if you print this form, the user can write on that line, no problem. But if they start to fill it out electronically and they start typing on that form, uh, on that line, you'll see that it expands and goes on and it looks a little strange. So the way to get around this um, this section here is what we can do is actually create a cell that will go there that will have a box that the user can fill out if they print the form, but it's a box that will also contain a plain text form field. So instead of having the drawn underscore lines, we're going to come up to, um, we're going to say comments, and we're going to come up here to our insert tab where under table and just select that first cell a one by one table. Then we're going to hit enter a few times to expand it out again so that if the user prints the form they'll have enough space in that box to write their answers. But then we're also going to place our cursor and come up here to the developer tab and insert a plain text form field right there. So if the user does fill it all electronically they'll be able to start typing right there. All right. So then we can get rid of those underscore sections. Next, we have a table here that has a rating scale. And notice that this table goes on to the second page of the document. But the second page, if it's printed, or whether on a two-sided print or printing it onto two pages, that header row is not repeated. So we want that header row to show up so that the user will have an easier time filling in the form. So what we're gonna do is select the header row, right click, come to Table Properties, and come up here to the Row tab and check the box that says Repeat as Header Row at the top of each page. Then click OK. And now that header row is repeated um, on each page since it bleeds onto the second page. Now we want to be sure and we can come up here and copy one of our checkboxes, simply select it and hit Control C, and we want to paste that into each of the cell options here on the table. All right. 
Now down here under the signature section, um, notice again if it's drawn with underscores and so if somebody t starts to type information there, it's going to um, expand and, and not be underlined and that type of thing. So instead, what we wanna do for this to create this is come up here and insert we're going to insert a table with actually three rows, so a three by one table. And then what we're going to do is squeeze this middle row here in so that the two lines are a little bit longer and have enough um, space for someone to fill in the information. We're going to come right below the table and we're going to say name. And we're going to tab over and put date under here. Then what we can do is select that table, come back up to the table design and say no border, but then we wanna put the bottom border back on. So we'll come back up and say bottom border. Now we wanna get rid of the border on that middle cell. So we simply highlight that middle cell and come up and say no border. Now we have that nice gap in there and we can actually come in here and insert our uh, plain text form field there and everywhere where we want the user to be able to fill in something electronically if they fill it in electronically. So then what we can do is copy that and paste and we can say job title and we wanted the, this to say department and we can move it back to um, justify it just how we want then we can delete this area here. Now, how do we get rid of that gray shading so that when we print it, it lo still looks clean and formatted for printing? So then all we have to do is come up to the top of our form under the Legacy Tool Form Field dropdown, select um, this button here that says Form Field Shading, and as soon as you check that, it takes the gray shading away. So the nice thing is, is now if, if someone were to print the form and you give them that option of just printing it, they'll have nice clean white boxes to check. Um, they'll have their areas that they can type into the form, um, to the form field or write um, what they need to, and it's still a clean looking document whether they fill it out electronically or print it. Now, if they're gonna fill it out electronically, you can go ahead and lock the form for them by going up to Restrict Editing, check the box number two, and select uh, Filling in Forms. You can say, yes, start enforcing protection. You don't need to put a password. Uh, we're just testing the form right now, and just click OK. So now you can send this form to your users. They can fill it out electronically, or if they print it, uh, it'll be nice and clean, and they'll be able to fill it out manually as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure and give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. Be sure and visit my website at SharonSmithHR.com. If you have any questions or tips, be sure and leave them in the comments section below the video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.